Good day, you beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Tea and Biscuits. My name's Bizzle, and first things first, thank you very much for tuning in. We're getting on quite a roll now, aren't we? So, if you haven't already, and you like what you see, please hit that subscribe. Check out the other episodes. They're quite joyous, all sorts of stuff going on. And this week, engineering episode. So, I'm going to show you how to 3D CAD something for your car. So I'm going to use a program called Fusion by Autodesk, free to download for personal use. And therefore how to 3D print something. I will make a little cover for my inlet throttle body. So I'm going to show you how I 3D CAD this up. So take a seat with a tea and a biscuit and enjoy my journey. Okay, so in a previous episode, I talked about how I wanted to get rid of this top piece here. And I'm gonna show you how I'm going to CAD this up and actually get rid of this. I might be able to get a cover plate laser cut. So I'm gonna show how I'm going to get this bit into CAD, or more particularly, a plate to the underneath. This bit here is just a cover, so we're just gonna quickly whip this off. Here's the fixing holes originally for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to want to retain them because this is actually gonna be, it's on a supercharged car, obviously, so this needs to be absolutely airtight. There's some sort of gasket in here as well. I could probably use this as a template to get an original drawing round. This has got all the screw holes. I'm not gonna want this bit in the middle. And at some point I'm gonna want some holes in here as well, because I do need some back takeoff to go to a map sensor, to go to a boost line and things like that. So I'm going to use this. But the principles are the same, whether I had this here or not. You need to try and get basically a flat photograph off this and some key measurements. I'll tell you what, out of principle, I'm going to use not this and draw around it or anything like that. I am going to use this here. Just going to grab some blue roll. I'm going to clean this up just to get a nice shiny surface on this particular bit, right? And this is going to flash up really well on my camera. Okay, so I'm going to insert the photo which I took. So I'm going to go up to the insert picture, find it on my computer. So this one was taken a little bit further out, you know, so there's no um, distortion at the edges of the lenses. So um, you want to try and take a picture as, as plain as you can and as far out as you can. I'm just going to drop that in for now, um, and it doesn't know how big this picture is. I just grabbed this gasket, I quickly checked beforehand to make sure it's, a, it's exactly the same size as that piece of metal. So just convenience for the filming, um, I've just grabbed this because it's easy to handle, but obviously you can have the actual product um, to hand, but just for the sake of the video this is what I've done. Um, and I need to scale it, okay, so what we're going to do to start off with is we're just going to grab a rough measurement. I'm going to grab from this very top corner here um, to the furthest point away, which for me is 254 mil. So when we go into here, we're going to right click on here, we're going to go to calibrate, and I'm going to do the same thing here basically. So I'm going to pick up in this triangular point here, furthest point away from there, which is say here, and I'm gonna say that's 254 mil. Uh, and, and that's gonna be roughly calibrated. Now, one thing that it hasn't done is obviously your, your X axis and your Y axis might be out. And we can just quickly check that. And we're gonna check it by sketching on that plane, and I'm gonna drop in some points. So I'm gonna pick up that first point again, and I'm going to put holes, uh, ones in the middle of these holes because obviously this is an important feature to get right to make sure that my screws, you know, line up properly on here. Now I do this by just, we want to pick up on the edge. Obviously we can see down inside this hole and you need to try and not allow that to disturb where you're going to put the centre of the hole. So I'm trying to concentrate on the edge of the, the hole, um, the sharp metal edge of the hole. And actually how I do it is I get it about this far zoomed in and I kind of blur my eyes and then just hit point and just see if I can get it about right. So looking at circle in about the middle and I'm just going to work my way through 
Now you're going to be out by you know 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a mil here and there. Um, you're not going to get get this exactly spot on. But we're going to give it a go. I'm just dropping in these points. Get that distant one in there as well. And the other two that I just want to quickly do are straight across the middle. Something like that, right? And now we can just quickly measure and see how they are. So 254, 254, so it's about half a mil out. So half a mil over 254 mil is pretty good. That half a mil is probably just in me checking the holes. So if we go to here, we're gonna go straight across and that is through the center of the holes. 39.5. Now, obviously, if you had uh, digital calipers, you'd be able to get this better, or a steel rule. I'm just using a plastic scaled rule. 39.2, so actually, that's not too bad. I'm going to take one more here. Let's go for this one here. 225.7. So, when I'm measuring center of holes, it's very difficult to gauge the middle of a hole. So, what I do is I just come down to the bottom, to the tangent bottom of the edge. It's a lot easier to eyeball that here. And then I'm gonna go across to this one here. It's pretty good, you know, that's scaling 225.5, I would say. 225.5, 225.7, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt what I was just banging on about. I just wanted to throw an invite out to you guys, subscribers or non-subscribers, to say that if you want to feature on a future episode of Tea and Biscuits, hit me up on tmbiscuits at gmail.com. Whether you're building, driving, rebuilding, modifying track days, hit me up on an email. And who knows, you might get a visit from me with some tea and biscuits, kick some tyres, sniff some petrol, and feature on a future episode. So there is an alternative tool that we can use to this calibration method. What we can use is use the scaling tool. So what you need to do is take a measurement of the real part and take a measurement of the image. And if you find that the image is too big and needs to be shrunk down, then what we can do is you can take the smaller dimension, which will be the real part, and you divide that dimension by the dimension taken of the image, which is the larger part. And when you do that, you're gonna get a value less than one. And that's going to reduce the size of the image. If you want to grow the image, so the image is smaller than the real part, then what you need to do is you need to divide the larger dimension by the smaller dimension. And that's going to give you a value greater than one. So it's gonna scale up the image. And by doing this, you can get a lot better and more accurate image to then sketch around. What I'm able to do now is I'm able to use the spline tool to just sketch around the curves nice and neatly and keep them as tucked in to that aluminium part as possible. Take your time, nice and accurately, and you'll get there. Once you've done that, you can go around that sketch line and you can just make small adjustments by using the green lines to change the trajectory and also the strength of that path to just tidy up the edge as much as possible, nice and smooth and as accurately as possible. And once this is done, the internal area should turn blue. If you're finding that it's not turning blue, then it means that you have not completed the loop of the sketch. And unfortunately, you'll either have to check the points and make sure they're all attached to the straight lines, or you'll just have to delete and go again. Once you've done that, it's just standard CAD stuff. So we're going to take that sketch, we're going to select it, and we're going to extrude it up a couple of millimetres to change a sketch on a profile plane to an actual part. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put holes into that part. So we're going to select the top surface, and we're going to sketch in the holes. Don't worry about the size of the circles at the moment, just try and make sure that you get them circular. At the end, we're going to dimension one hole. For us, a clearance hole is 5.5 mil. 
So dimension one to 5.5 mil, and then just make all of the sketch circles the same size. Then you can cut extrude down through the part. Once we've now got the part, we're going to save it. I'm gonna open up my slicer program, which for me is Prusa Slicer. We're gonna drop that onto the bed, and we're just gonna navigate it and put it into the right place. We're gonna select that we're using a PLA. We're gonna check our density, and then we're going to hit print. Easy peasy. So my 3D printer I keep in this tall cupboard in our office, in our house. And the reason it's in here is because I quite often print in ABS and you really need a cupboard or enclosure to keep it in. So I already had my other printer in here anyway. So I just moved the shelves around and um, I keep all my material up there. And then this is where the 3D printer is. You can see here that I've made a little thing for my spool to just hang here. It just goes through a little gap between the door and the shelf and it comes around and feeds my printer and it just means it can keep the temp in. I always try and preheat this chamber as long as possible as well um, because I, you want to try and get this area as hot as you can. No fire risk at all. You can see I've just had to do a modification at the back here. So it's a Prusa Mark III S. I bought this second hand for £200 earlier on this year and it's been pretty faultless, if I'm honest. I needed to put a new needle on it because it started to get blocked and clog up. And I bought a new bed for this be quite recently because the old bed was really scratched and marked up. And this is quite cool. It's got a mottled bit on one side, um, which is appropriate for ABS. And it's got this funky kind of finish on the other side, which is not appropriate for ABS. So that's the bed that I use, it seems to work quite well. Okay, so this is my SD card slot. I'm going to poke that in the side. And we're going to select. It's going to start warming up. So I'm just going to print this in gold actually, not in ABS. Partly because I'm going to record this with the door open, so um, it means that it's not susceptible to temperature change and warping, but also PLA doesn't warp as much as ABS. So that's why I've decided to print in PLA instead. So this is just gonna heat the bed, heat the nozzle, and then it should start. Alrighty, so this is exciting. So we've got this off the printer now. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Here's the little gasket-y bit, which I'm gonna check it against. So we're gonna line this up. Oh no. What's going on here? This isn't right, people. Not good at all. So when we line this corner up over here, None of these are lined up. This is perfect around here. Some of these holes are good. These ones aren't. And if I line them up, some of them are good. Some of them aren't. The whole thing is offset. So let me quickly measure this from that diagonal. 253, yeah, I mean, it is 253.5. Trying to get that exactly. Yeah, that's 253.5, isn't it? And this was meant to be 40. And that's, that's 40, or 39.5, I think I actually said. So, I think what we've learnt here is I didn't check enough dimensions, and actually, these holes are off. Although I copied them in the drawing. It's a good starter, but actually you need to cross-reference these drawings a lot more. Okay, so let's take a look at what we had on CAD and see if we can change this. If you've come here for a how-to video, this is gonna be more of a what's and all learning as we go kind of video. So what would be my next steps? Well, if I was at work and I did this, uh, 
not only would I be quite embarrassed like I am, um, I'd need a quick fix. My quick fix would be I would put this on a bit of hatched drawing paper, one mil drawing paper, and I would draw around this with a sharp pencil and that would allow me to gain a lot more scale and measurements across this. But I'm trying to show how you could put into CAD more complicated pieces. So I'm going to try and not rely on the luxury of this. I'm going to try and still work from that photograph if I can and fix it. You might not be doing something flat, you might be doing something more complicated. So I want to try and help you guys do something that is more complicated and me just keep just saying put it on a piece of paper and draw around it really doesn't help you. So I decided to go and get these bodies in the end because it was just I, I couldn't trust the photograph I just walked into the garage and just quickly took and what I want to do is set them up so they're level and then take a photograph using my phone's inclinometer built in nice and square so I've just propped it up as you can see here I've used kind of pencils and pens and bits because that's what I've got laying around but that's looking pretty square there right so I'm going to take another picture and upload it and try and sketch around that the process this time round is exactly the same. The only difference I'm doing is I'm going to rotate and try and get completely square and horizontal the part itself in the image. And this is going to allow me to just double check dimensions and double check that the part is actually orientated correctly. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully giving me a bit more accuracy. Okay, so this is the part which I printed. This is template. Here we go. Look at that. That is absolutely spot on. And here it is, the final print on top of the throttle bodies, all lined up, looking good. You can see the holes are, you know, good enough. There's a little bit of clearance around, which is helping us. And just poking this pencil down is just helping it realign and just proving the point that, yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, if this was a, a steel part or an aluminium sheet, I'd be using this. This is pretty good and accurate. So that's it for the tutorial, the how to, to CAD up and 3D print parts. You can then send this out as a DXF that you've proven it works. Um, but that's it for today. My name's Ben Bizzle. This has been Tea and Biscuits. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.